Okay, so we're now recording. I want to welcome everybody to our Amherst community chat for Thursday, March 25th. Today we have DPW Superintendent Guilford Mooring, as well as the town engineer Jason Skeels joining us to talk about the Pomeroy Village intersection improvement project. So thank you both for being back here today to talk about this. Before I have um, you all introduce yourselves and get to the Q&A, I just want to give your town manager, Paul Balkaman, a chance to give any town updates. Brianna. So yeah, there's a lot happening. Um, I think I say that every week. Um, so the, the news on the vaccine front is that we are, we've done 1,100 vaccines. By the end of this week, we'll have done for this week. Um, and I think that that's a really good number. We are we were doing a homebound program where we've done about 30 at the end of by the end of this week people who are um, homebound giving them getting them the vaccine for our uh, mobile unit going out. Um, we've also reserved 25% of our vaccine load um, that were allocated, which is permissible permissible by the state for teachers and um, childcare workers and things like that. And those are special. Um, special sessions for those educators for anybody in Hampshire County. And so we're coordinating that with the city of Northampton. And so there we had our first one for that last night and that was very, that was sold out basically. Well, not exactly the term you're supposed to use, but you know, it's what it was. Um, it's a really busy time of year. Um, on Monday night, the town council voted to approve the moving forward on a plan for the North Common. And so we'll be moving forward on that, on the planning for that. Construction probably won't happen this year, but it takes time to get the final designs and bids and construction and all that kind of stuff. But that's really exciting because it sort of speaks to a lot of the other work that's happening in town. And you know, the things I'm going to talk about are very DPW focused, and that's why I really appreciate uh, Jason and Guilford spending a few minutes with us today because it's their super busy time of year. Um, the playground on Kendrick Park is back, you know, the, the construction crews are back putting that together. Um, the um, We got a grant to complete the multi-use path from on Mill Lane that will, will connect Groff Park to the numerous apartment complexes. We um, on East Hadley Road and the DPW put in a, a multi-use path all along East Hadley Road, which is really, if you haven't been down there, you should, it's really nice. Um, the dog park is moving forward. Um, another big construction project uh, under the DPW's um, eyes. Um, so there's just a lot of a lot of things happening. You know, Hickory Ridge will be coming down the road. We're so I'm, I was kind of excited when we started listing all these things. Like we're really making a lot of progress and things happening on the ground that are improvements. Um, and there's more work at Mill at Mill River and other places. So um, just appreciate. And so and not to mention the paving and all the contracts and bidding that DPW has to do. So uh, that's just a short long way of saying thanks to Guilford and Jason for taking the time to be here today. Great, thank you, Paul, for that update. So um, I'd love for Guilford and Jason maybe to just give a quick introduction of themselves. And then uh, I wanna remind the folks in the room live to feel free to use the Q&A function. It looks like we're um, already getting questions coming in. So continue to use that or raise your hand and we'll acknowledge you live. Um, so Jason, you wanna introduce yourself first? Sure. Um, Jason Skeels, town engineer for Amherst Public Works. I've worked for the town for a little over 20 years, if you count my intern years. I think it's 18 full-time and three or four intern summers and, and semesters while I was in school. That definitely counts. We'll put you over 20. And I'm sure most people know Guilford, but Guilford? Hi, I'm, I'm Guilford Mooring. Uh, I've been here about the a little less than Jason. I started full time here in 2002. Um, so getting ready to go to 20, almost 20 years. Great. So, see that uh, glassy look in his eyes when he said that? <laughs> <laughs> it happens to all of us. Um, <laughs> So we have some um, questions that are coming into the room live and some that were prepared. Um, I'm gonna start with the live question in the room from Sarah. Ha has the town finally acquired Hickory Ridge? No, we still have the, we're still operating under the purchase and sale agreement. Um, and so there are numerous things to work out, mainly related to the solar uh, 
project that um, the, the owner has to, wants to secure the permissions and the, um, um, all, all the things that have to go into making sure that that can be up and running before they are willing to transfer the property. We're still looking forward to doing that, but it, the, um, with solar projects, as you know, with our solar project on landfill, it can take a long time to get through the permitting process and get the kind of um, level of uh, support it needs from at the state level. So not yet, but we're, we're, we're still optimistic. And I, I do see that coming up, that question or that comment um, associated with Pomeroy Village Project a couple of times on our Engage mm -hmm. page. So I think that's, you know, people are thinking about those things geographically um, and probably tying, tying the two together. So um, one question that I think that we have here is how, how did this project come about? A lot of people f say that it just kind of popped up when we got that grant, but can you talk about kind of the history of this project? What, what so, led up to where we are now? So this project started before Jason and I even worked for the town, even Jason's intern years. Um, the state started looking at this intersection back in the mid nineties and actually designed a complete intersection that included turn lanes and signals and was basically a, basically a, your typical intersection. Uh, it was proposed to the town around 2002 and three. Um, the town kind of didn't appreciate the attack. It was very, even though it had crosswalks, it was very pedestrian unfriendly and very not centered for bicycle or any other type of movement. It's just, just it was your, basically it was your 25 year ago designed by Mass Highway to move traffic through the intersection. Um, that was all it was. Um, the town said, no, we don't really like that. Um, we went from having stop signs on Pomeroy in 2002 and three to installing the traffic lights that are there now. Um, that was an interim step. And over the last, that, that's 20 years, right? 18, 20 years. We've been working a little bit on this project and then setting it aside when something else comes up, working a little bit more on this project. We've applied for th three mass works grants or two mass works grants here. And this is the first one we've received. So this has been going on for quite a while. So it's been a project you've wanted to do. It's just that it takes so much funding to do a major intersection project like this. You have to hope that you get state funding to make it happen. Otherwise, it takes all of our road paving money for the for the year to do this one project. So, when we're thinking about those uh, the improvements that we have planned, does the does the grant that was allocated one and a half million does that seem to be sufficient, or will there be other funds used, or how how will that work in terms of funding? The one and a half should cover most of the intersection work. 99 percent of the intersection work. Whether we pave beyond that or do some people are asking for sidewalks down West, West Pomeroy and Pomeroy, those would be things we'd have to do with additional funds from somewhere else. So um, this money will just concentrate on the intersection. And will this project fall in line? You know, is this a, is this a complete streets project or how does that, this fall in line with uh, the, the work towards complete streets that the town's been doing? Um, to tell the truth, the one thing, the one part of complete streets that may not fit in this project are trees. Um, but we we have we put everything else in, right, Jason? Yeah, there's bike paths and sidewalks and everything else. Everything else for a complete street. But you're right, there's not a whole lot of room for trees since we're already crammed within the right of way and probably need takings to boot. I will, I'll take this quick opportunity to for folks who are watching who haven't um, interacted on the project page for this um, improvement project on engageamherst.org. There's a project page for the Pomeroy project, and there you can post your ideas. And some we've got a lot of um, comments coming in so far, and we did some word clouding, and the things that kept popping up were you know sidewalks and walking and landscaping. I think even fruit trees came up a bunch. So I know that 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 I have seen that for people's vision of this, um, that's this project. So that's interesting. So, so on the design, we do that all in house, right? I mean, we have a, under Jason, we have an engineering department that, that does all the design work. So it's that we don't have to contract out with someone or do we do contract out some of it? We'll contract out the surveying and we'll contract out the data collection and the data analysis. Mm -hmm. And then probably for this project, most of the actual design work will come in-house. 
And you guys know how to do that, right, Jason? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the modeling stuff that we don't have the software for. So it's nice to have someone else model it so that sort of a third party takes a look at it, makes sure everything flows correctly. And when you say there's not enough room for trees, I don't really understand what that means. Is that? Well, if we're just focusing on the intersection and that's really all we can afford to focus on with the money mm -hmm. we have, if we were going further out, we could put in grass strips and trees and, you know, make room with the sidewalks and bike paths and, and put, but not with what, what we're going to have to focus in on for the, for just the intersection, that's going to be, you know, I mean, you could put a single tree in the middle of, if we do a roundabout, you could put a, a tree in that, but the, there's not a lot of room on the edges since you've got, you know, all the establishments directly abutting this property are, are very impervious. They, they don't have a whole lot of green space. So there's not a whole lot of opportunity to, to fill in any of that green space. I see. But a, a property owner could put trees on the edge of their property if they wanted to. You're just talking about what we have in, that we own. Right. Well, That's the, the issue. The right of way is, is difficult to squeeze mm -hmm. anything in. Mm -hmm. And one thing people have been asking is, are will they expect to see construction work as early as this summer? Or when do you anticipate getting out to that to that phase of this project? Construction will be next summer. Next summer. Do the design work this year, and do all the make all the decisions on what which which way we want to go with the designs, and then and get it all designed up and hopefully out to bid next spring. Can you talk a little bit about what the kind of options you're weighing, the major options for the intersection? Indeed, Jason. So we've got one that's just a, a simple multi-lane um, signalized intersection with um, two dedicated left-hand turn lanes on West Street, slot 116. Um, the Pomeroy approaches remain pretty much the same, no, no additional turn lanes. Um, we're adding bike lanes um, and sidewalks just within the immediate intersection um, that we can hopefully expand on later. Um, so that's just the simple streamlined intersection that would have a, a, a much smarter um, signal system in it. Would, they would, you know, reduce lag time and stuff like that and, and would, would recognize traffic coming in all the different directions um, and hopefully accommodate it. But with any traffic light, you're always going to see backups at prime times. And then the other the other option is the roundabout option, where we you know we see them all over town like Triangle and and East Pleasant and and uh, we like how they work. We I don't know they, they're both good options. And is there a, a preference you know from your standpoint with your background and your expertise? Is there a, a preference amongst your team? I always like roundabouts, but <laughs> they reduce accidents and the severity of the accidents that happen at a roundabout are a tenth of the severity that can happen at a at a red light. If someone runs a red light, there's going to be a serious accident. When somebody, you know, when they when people kind of go have a little diagonal crash in a roundabout, it's low speed, it's, you know, minimal damage, minimal injuries, even we have even had bicycle accidents at the Triangle and, and East Pleasant Street roundabout and the cyclists were able to ride away. Like so that, that it was an accident, yes, but nobody gets injured. So that's the nice thing that that intersection used to have a high injury rate. And we looked at the studies with the within the last four years that it's been in operation. And there have been accidents, yes, but there have been zero injuries. So, so it's the safest option. Right? Yeah. So uh, are you, you're muted, Guilford. If you think about the roundabout, your speeds reduced all four approaches. If you have a traffic signal, Two sides, the speeds of two sides, the speeds reduced. The other two sides, they're going through the intersection, and they're going through at the speed limit. And then when yellow, if they turn yellow, they're going through a little faster. So <laughs> the roundabout actually. You know how I drive. <laughs> the, the roundabout actually makes everyone going through the intersection slow down, and that's one of the biggest pluses to it. I one of the things that when I first started here, Guilford. You told me about how, because I, I was, I, you know, we, we have a roundabout where I used to live, but a much larger one. But like you said something about how fast you tried to go through a roundabout. How fast can you drive around a roundabout? And it's like the maximum speed without, I mean, without your car tipping over is like 20 miles an hour or something ridiculously low because because of the bend, you, you have to slow down. 
Have you been testing that, Paul? The upper limits? No, I think Guilford said he was going. He was testing oh. it. Tires really start to squeal at thirty. <laughs> I actually drove through, drove Paul around the one on the north side of campus, and we got up to twenty-five. And at that point, he was getting a little. I was out the door. The face, <laughs> and he was starting to feel like he was uncomfortable. So, at usually around twenty-five, most people feel that they're going too fast through that circle. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I mean, another, another question that just came in, are there any bike share locations in that area? If not, could there be? Well, good thing you brought that up because there's going to be one right there this year. Planning where, one as we speak. And where will it be located specifically, or is that still up for debate? It probably in front of, there's a small sort of abandoned building. It used to be dancer computers. It used to be a bank drive through bank teller. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say it's 650 West Street. Um, there's a guy currently working on that building trying to turn it into a coffee shop. So we're hoping to put the bike share right there, which is just adjacent to a, a bus pull off. So hopefully you could, if you've got the bus there, you could hop on a bicycle and, you know, make your, complete your multimodal trip to wherever you wanted to get going. Oh, that's excellent news. And it's, it's good to hear about a coffee shop because again, going back to the submittals we've received so far, we've had 10 mentions of coffee shop in some or way, shape or form. So people are asking about that too. I think they'll be happy to hear that. Is it, is it, that's interesting. Oh, yeah, I'm curious about that too, because that had come up through the rumor mill a little bit. And I'm not sure if anybody's really talked to planning or anything about it, but that's exciting news. Yeah. Been slowly going through the planning and inspections process. He's he's not in a rush. Let me put it yeah. that way. Is it somebody we know? Um, no, not, okay. not really. Okay. I think people have been in that part of town have been asking for that that with or without considerations to the um, the intersection improvements. People have been asking for coffee mm -hmm. for a while, so <laughs> that fits in nicely. The desert down there. Yes. Uh, so maybe, I mean, I think that's another question, you, you know, part of the reason for the grant was to, you know, activate this village center. Could any of you talk about what the project, how that project might impact um, livening that space, activating that village center? Either design option, it, it you know, promotes walking. And right now without, without signalized crosswalks or without the traffic calming and crosswalks, it's it's you have to you have to take your time to cross the street and find your gap so it's it's good that there'll be more walkable walkable options and people will be more likely to do it since it's not you know since it will no longer be a dangerous trip on foot or on or by bicycle and there is a couple opportunities coming up this week actually tonight and i believe saturday in fact to talk about uh this project so what what are those events look like? Um, what can people expect to learn from those? So um, tonight is is a, we, we, there are sort of public just engagement sessions. So we're trying to hear from the public what, what, what they go to this, inter, what they go to the village for. We, we call it Pomeroy Village and people say, does it, this doesn't look like a village to me, but we want this to build into that kind of concept where it is a destination and a, a service area for people who live in that area of South Amherst. Um, so we wanna hear how people use it, um, how they would like to be able to use it. And I think um, there's multiple ways to engage. This is one of them. Another way is the, the TSO committee of the town council is having uh, open meetings where you'll have a little bit of a presentation and then mostly a time for the council and the staff to listen to your concerns. And that's one that's happening tonight at 6 p.m. And it's all on Zoom, of course. And there's another one happening on Saturday, uh, the 27th at 6 p.m. I mean, at 2 p.m., sorry, um, uh, from 2 to 4. And so those will be times where um, staff will make a brief presentation and then sort of help to engage people in terms of um, what do you go there? How do you go through the intersection? Are you on foot? Are you using the bus? Are you driving? Is your interest to get through there as fast as possible? Is, is it there? Is it a destination for you? What are the things you like about it? What should we enhance? What should we try to eliminate? Um, I think we sort of have a sense of that, but we want to hear from the public as well. Um, so th those are those the things that we want to hear. And then from that, we take that information, uh, work on it, and then ultimately we'll present a recommendation back to the town council for its for its decision, the town council will make the final decision on the 
not the details of it, but the, the big uh, concept of what the intersection should look like. And I, again, I think Guilford mentioned this, $1.5 million seems like a lot of money, but it really is, it keeps it right. It, it's just enough to do the, the core of the intersection, all the other stuff, you know, as much as we'd like to do it, probably isn't gonna get done under this, with this money that's available. And, and just quickly, those meetings that Paul mentioned tonight at six, Saturday at two, um, those are on our public meetings calendar. The links are there on our homepage. You can also find them from the engagement uh, platform, engageamherst.org slash Pomeroy, where you can add some um, ideas and suggestions and get access to those meetings and any other um, presenta previous presentations. So it's a good place to, to start if you wanna dig into this project. So we have another question in the room. Apologies if this was asked earlier, but are there plans to incorporate walkable access to Hickory Ridge as part of this project as the course hopefully becomes conservation lands with trails? Um, we did briefly mention Hickory Ridge, but um, can anybody respond to that? There, there currently is no plan to have a sidewalk down West Pomeroy with this project. So if you're asking for a sidewalk down West Pomeroy, no, that would come later. There are plans as Hickory Ridge is being developed to tie existing conservation trails through Hickory Ridge and bring them out to Orchard Valley and take them to the other places using the trail system in, uh, in and around Hickory Ridge, but um, on, side, on the side of the road sidewalks are not anticipated for West Pomeroy at this time. And there's some reasons for it. There's some challenges to that uh, because of conservation area or what are the challenges for that? Wetlands, unless there's a lot of wetlands we have to cross and fill to get a sidewalk all the way across. And so that that's a that becomes a permitting challenge. Uh, not that we wouldn't want to do it. A, we don't have the money to do it, but then we also recognize that disturbing wetlands becomes an issue as well. All right, great. Thank you for that. That's a great question. Um, I want to remind the folks who are live um, attendees in the room, we've got about seven minutes less left. So feel free to ask your question in Q&A or raise your hand and we'll hear from you live. Um, we've got a question here from Julian. Is the rotary or the improved intersection plan less expensive? Are there cost differences between the two options? Jason, Jason, what was the uh, number that Mass Highway uses for their intersections? We're not sure, actually. Um, I, I don't see that there would be much of a difference in the, in the cost of either one. It's all it all boils down to how much asphalt you're putting down is the big ticket item. Uh, although the, the signals do get expensive. Um, so the roundabout just incorporates more granite and asphalt, whereas the signals incorporates more technology. And so it kind of ends up being a wash between a roundabout and a, and a signalized intersection. So there's no so cost incentive to go with one or the other? Not especially. Well, I was in a meeting earlier and I think I thought Jason was there too, but they were basically saying that when Mass DOT does an intersection improvement project, they start with a million and a half dollars as the base estimate without even deciding what they're going to do. Oh. Mm -hmm. So one question we've, we've been getting a lot and it doesn't necessarily um, pertain to this project. People are asking when is outdoor dining returning to downtown and I know DPW was pretty critical in getting that set up um, in the past. So any information or updates on that front? Started repainting the lines this week. Um, we're moving the Jersey barriers uh, starting. So we'll probably move some of the Jersey barriers. The ones that are there currently will probably leave on Friday. And then Monday and Tuesday, we'll be um, grinding some of the lines that are some of the blacked out lines out and bringing in Jersey barriers Tuesday and Wednesday. And then uh, the restaurants will feel free and be free to bring their tables out and have their little setups. And that's but, mostly in the town center. Correct. Okay. So by April 1st is the goal to let restaurants be able to be open. And I think we saw that, you know, this weekend when the common and all the outdoor areas downtown were jammed with folks. Um, all the tables were eat. full. Yeah. I yeah. was down Crash there on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can you, I mean, this is, a, can you talk about the, um, the new playground at Kendrick Park too? Cause it's, I was excited to see the workers back and working so quickly. Yeah, they're, 
they're aiming for a June 1st opening date. Um, we may have to delay that to let the grass get us become established though. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're, the contractor is going to be done by June 1st. Um, so what, what we have to do then is just sort of let the, let the uh, grass seed become established. Um, there might be options for opening parts of the, of the playground while keeping some of the grass areas um, cordoned off. So we'll have to we'll have to think about it going forward. But yeah, they're moving pretty fast, um, and expect to be complete by June one. And what was exciting about that is that one of the things when we early on started talking about downtown and recreation is that parents would say, "I have no pl nothing to do with my kids when I bring them downtown. I want to get a piece of pizza and take them somewhere. And there's no place to take them." And so this is re in response to that, and um, it and, and the fact that we got a major grant to support this as opposed to town funds, which and all the design was done internally again. Um, so I think that's a real, that's, that's an exciting positive thing for us. All right, I'm gonna give one last call to the folks who are in the room. Um, now's your last chance to ask a question of Jason or Guilford or Paul or I, um, put it into the Q&A or raise your hand. Otherwise, I'm gonna give Guilford and Jason a chance to um, give us some information that we didn't ask specifically about or you didn't get a question on? Is there anything you want people to know right now about your work, this project or otherwise? <laughs> There's a, there is a lot going on. Um, when everyone's been sitting at home for uh, the pandemic, being at home with their children or working from home, we've all been here working. Um, we, uh, we've been doing it quite, a, quite, we've been doing it all along. Um, we have a couple issues that are coming up, um, basically that have been because of people being at home. We uh, have had some sewer issues, more people being at home, flushing more stuff down the toilet has caused some sewer backup. So if you are at home, try not to put things you shouldn't put down the toilet in the toilet. Um, if your child puts something in the toilet they shouldn't, please take it out. Um, don't flush it. Um, that includes flushable wipes, right? That includes flushable wipes. Don't. They're flushable, but they don't break down like toilet paper does in the system, and they tend to bind up the pumps and cause overflows. So that's probably one of the biggest things we've been having issues with is is more flow in the sewer systems, even though there's um, less businesses open and less students around. Um, yeah. Everything else is going good. Water's good. We should have plenty of water going into the new new uh, new summer. Um, and then we have our regular projects will be starting up. There'll be some paving that goes on around the south end of Amherst, but mostly we're finishing up with work that we started, which is in the center of Amherst and some in the north end of Amherst right now. And I can attest that despite Guilford's background, it looks like he's in ski country. Uh, he and everybody at DPW, DPW staff seven days a week, they, they run the water, they provide water, they take care of the wastewater and it's a seven day a week um, operation. And so, all through the pandemic, DPW workers have been showing up um, without missing a beat. So we appreciate all the work that they've done for this, for us, for the town. And I've got a couple of uh, quick comments here from the Q&A. Not a question, but thank you for introducing and curating the Engage platform. It seems great so far. Well done. Well, thank you for visiting and enjoying it. Um, and then another question here, pothole repairs soon, question mark. <laughs> repairs yeah. are a constant thing we've been doing it all spring the, the weather the weather is actually ahead of the asphalt plants so um we've just been using our small machine for patching right now and we expect the asphalt plants to probably open up the first of april and then once the asphalt plants open up we'll be able to put more people out to patch potholes but if so you, you have a specific location, please let us know. You can enter a service request from our homepage or email us, however you want to get us the information if you're seeing a particular pothole that you want us to um, send in to DPW. So, so you need the asphalt plants open and operating before you can do really fix the potholes, right? You, you do cold patch or some other temporary fix during the winter? Yeah. Yes, we're, we have, we're doing... We're using cold patch and we also have a machine which reheats asphalt, but mm. the machine can only do a cubic yard at a time. Mm. So you're really limited. If you can go to an asphalt plant, you, we can get, you know, seven, eight tons of asphalt at a time and do some patching and then move on. That's, that's the ideal way of doing it. See, good. 
great. Well, we, um, Jason, did I skip you? Did, is there anything else that you wanted to say? No. Okay. Um, we are at, at our time. We will put this recording up on our channel. I want to thank Guilford and Jason for taking time out of their busy days to join us. Um, and all of the information we talked about, meetings and engagement opportunities are on our website. But if you have questions, you can email us at info at amherstma.gov and we will get you some more details. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, Brianna. Have Thanks, a nice guys. day. Bye-bye. Bye. You too.